What's going on guys, Bobby here, and today we're going to be bringing you guys something we have never brought you before. We're going to bring you a complete breakdown and guide for how to play a brawler, specifically today, Carl. Let's get into it. What's going on guys? So I actually spent the entire day yesterday playing Carl and we got him to number one in the world. Now, when I woke up, there was about five 500 Carls and I was pretty intrigued because when Leon came out and when Gene came out, more so Leon, when I woke up, there were already five 700s, five, uh, some 800s, a lot of 600s. And I was so confused as to why there were very few 500 Carls. Now, I woke up about six hours after he came out, so I started to ask the general public and people who got him 500, what's up? Why do people not have him at 700? Why do people not have him at 600? And all I heard was, he's trash. He's the worst brawler in the game. He's so bad, etc. Now, I played him. I played him one time. I bought him with the 59 gems, and then it, then it took me 380 boxes to max him out, which is ridiculous. That should never happen. No normal player is just going to have 380 boxes sitting around to max a brawler. So Supercell, you should definitely look into that. That was absolutely ridiculous. That's about $100 worth to max a brawler. That's so ridiculous. Anyways, let's talk about what we're going to be doing in this video. So anyways, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing every single uh, mode except for Heist. Now, why aren't we doing Heist? Carl's just useless in Heist, let's be real. He's not very good. There's maybe one map where he can be applicable, but still get outplayed by five other brawlers. And I'm just going to give him a grade of an F there. Now I'm going to be grading in every single mode so far. And that's basically the plan. I'm going to be giving you a little bit of live commentary, a little bit of the strats for what you do in those modes. And then I'm going to be giving a final grade. Now, on top of not playing Heist, there was actually a failure with the recordings. I wasn't able to live record Siege or live record Bounty. Now, the reason being... I do not know. I got an error on my phone when I was just about to click exit. I mean, when I was just about to finish recording and I don't know what happened and it's just all of a sudden not saved. Now, with that being said, I'm just going to go over some replays instead of having live games. As well as at the start, we're going to get into a friendly room and we're going to show you a little bit of brawler comparisons so you can get a real understanding of what Carl is like and who he's similar to in every single stat. Now, all the stats I'm going to be talking about is going to be on a maxed Carl with star power. So if you don't have him, we're going to be talking a little bit about the strengths of him, why his star power is so crucial to the brawler. All right, guys, so before we get into anything, I just want to talk a little bit about Carl's stats. Now, we're going to be going through some basic stuff, and we're also going to be going through some advanced stuff with a few um, comparisons that with other brawlers. Now, let's get into the simple stuff. So, his health is 6,160, which is directly comparable to a Pam. A Pam has the exact same amount of health, but I will say Carl does feel a lot squishier. Now, all these stats I'm going to be talking about are going to be with max brawlers with star powers, so keep that in mind when I'm explaining things and when I'm comparing them to other brawlers. Now, Carl does feel like he has significantly less health than Pam when I play him at least, just because Pam's star power has to do with healing, and even when you put down your turret, you get healing. So it just feels like Pam is a lot thicker and has a lot more health than Carl, but at the end of the day, they do have the same health. Now let's go over Carl's damage. Now, Carl's damage is 896 damage on hit, but it is a boomerang, and you have the opportunity to hit two times with one piece of ammo. Now, if you hit both times at max level, that is 1,792 damage Per boomerang now it goes up and it does 896 and you kind of it's kind of harder to hit the one that comes back towards you especially when it's not at max range but all you want to do is kind of just follow the direction the brawler is going say he's right in front of you and he tries to juke to the left and you hit him to the left just follow him and with your joystick also walk to the left and nine times out of ten the boomerang will come back and hit them now the damage per second is 779 while standing still. Now it does take a little bit more than a second to get your boomerang back. It takes actually 2.2 I think it was to get your boomerang completely back. I think it's 2.3 actually yes it's 2.3 to get your boomerang completely back. That's why the DPS is a little bit lower than the uh, damage on hit. Now we can talk about the speed of the axe. Now the speed of the axe is 35% when going forward or one third of its total speed. Now this is shocking because when it comes back, it's actually 65 or two thirds of its total speed. So obviously when it's coming back towards you, it, it moves significantly faster, two times faster than when you shoot it out. So think about that when you're trying to hit that second boomerang on the way back. Now as for Carl's speed, 
it's normal, aka 2.65 tiles per second. This is just comparable with everybody. Nita, Spike, all the other ones that don't have special movement, such as Colt with star power, tanks, or crow. His super speed is an astonishing 5.2 tiles per second, which is actually very fast. We're gonna show comparisons in races with other brawlers within the video. And his super damage is 560 maxed every 0.25 seconds. So a total DPS of 2,240 damage per second. Now it takes six shots to charge his super per boomerang and it takes 14 hits of his super in order to charge well his super again. Anyways, let's get into the friendly rooms. We're gonna show you a little bit of comparisons. We're gonna show you what counters him and let's just show you some general stuff. Let's hop into the friendlies right now. So over here, we're gonna show you how a Primo is countering, is the, one of the biggest counters to Carl. So right here, you're gonna see the Carl hits him one, two hits, three, four hits, five, six hits, seven, eight hits, nine, and 10. So you have to hit the Primo 10 total times in order to get the kill. Now this is obviously extremely hard because this is one of the slowest shots in the game. And it's obviously incredibly hard to hit another brawler 10 times before they can get you. Now, as you guys can see, Gene is also a huge counter. The reason I wanted to show Gene is because you're rarely gonna be facing a Piper or a Brock or someone with extreme range against a Gene because they just, Gene's not the strongest in a super ranged map. And I just wanna show you guys someone who Gene will be facing. As you guys saw, the Gene completely outranged Carl and Carl couldn't hit him at all. Gene has a very big advantage and thus counters him. Now we're gonna move on to Tara. So what we want to show you guys is that the distance for the shot is the exact same as Tara. We're going to do a zoom in at the end of the shot so you can see that they kind of die off at the same second. There's the first one. We're going to be doing one more here. And there you go. So as you guys can see, Tara shot actually does travel the distance a little bit further. But at the end of the day, they travel the same distance and will die off at the same distance. Now over here, what I want to show you guys is actually a race against the Crow with Super. Now at first, I thought the Crow would kill the... Carl, but actually it's closer than you think. So here we go, three, two, one, and here we go, we're racing. And as you guys saw, which you guys probably barely saw, the Crow just touched down right before the Carl was able to beat him. Now the Crow was like half a tile ahead of the Carl, then the Carl was able to get the kill. I mean, sorry, the Crow was half a tile ahead when he landed, but Carl's super does last longer, so he was able to zoom by the Crow. So at the end of both supers, Carl's the winner, but on the moment that Crow touches down from the jump, Crow can actually travel further than Carl. Now let's show you guys against Leon. So here we go, we're now gonna show you the second race. And this one's gonna be with Leon with super, with star power. So he should, in my mind, be able to beat the Carl. Here we go, they start racing and the Carl absolutely destroys the Leon. He won by like two or three tiles, which I find incredible because I thought Leon was super fast when in super. Now that we're done all of these stats and I showed you guys a few comparisons and told you guys the stats, let's get into games in which I will grade Carl in each mode in the game outside of showdown. So here we go into our Brawl Ball game. So let's talk about Brawl Ball. Now, so far, I'm really enjoying Carl on Brawl Ball. It's basically where I pushed him the entire day yesterday. And I think the reason that I really liked him in Brawl Ball yesterday was mostly because it's an open map, as you guys can see. Backyard Bowl being the most open Brawl Ball map definitely probably benefits Carl the most that there could be. I mean, the most that it possibly can. Now, maps like Pinhole Punt and uh, Super Stadium can also be decent. But I think this one is definitely by far the best. Now my opinion may be a little bit biased just due to the fact that there's only been Backyard Bowl out so far. But I do think he is pretty uh, pretty solid in Brawl Ball. Now what would I give him as a grade? I'd probably give him a B for now. I think he's going to be totally unusable in some maps where tanks dominate the meta. Because as you guys know, the biggest weakness to Carl is tanks. Let me just focus on this Leon right here. We're going to use our super. I think he has one of the best supers in the game, and that's kind of cool coming from a new brawler. Let's just have Toma put it in the net. Anyways, to continue on Brawl Ball, I'm going to give his rating a B, just because he's really good against ranged characters as well as medium range characters. I think if you want to push him, Brawl Ball might be the strat, just if it's one of the open maps. You don't really want to push him on any map, just because you're going to run into a lot of tanks, and you're definitely going to hit his weakness and be trapped. Let's see if Jigsaw can put this into the net. No, he can't figure it out. Poor Jigsaw. He tried so hard. I'm just gonna walk over here. He's gonna do a thick, oh, I guess we're gonna score anyways. So anyways, that's my rating on Brawl Ball. I'm gonna give him a B. That's why I gave him a B. I gave you guys the reasoning. And let's get 
Let's go into gem grab now and see if we can figure stuff out about how he is in gem grab. So here we go into gem grab. Now we haven't played Jean in Je uh, Carl, not Jean, sorry, in gem grab a lot, but I did some research. I spoke to Ark actually too. Ark has been pushing basically solely in gem grab. And he said he's actually been playing a lot of mid. Now I think Carl is dependent on what map he's playing in for what position he's gonna play. But I think he can definitely work as a lane and a mid. As you can see, we we're able to take out a tank, his actually biggest weakness. Let's see if we can help Toma out over here. That looks like Toma's actually gonna get sucked by a real Canadian. Now, I think he can do a bit of both. On this map, he's definitely gonna be a better lane, but I think we can see him strive as a mid. Let's see if we can get this Tara over here. Looks like Toma is gonna go down to the Tara. We're gonna be able to get the Tara. Now there is not too much of a comeback effect when it comes to Carl. You do have to wear them down. So you're not gonna see any like huge plays or anything like that. Now we're gonna be able to take out the Tara lane over there. And we have begun to take control of the map. The Tara does have super, so it's gonna be very interesting. As a total grade rating, I'd probably give Carl a C on this map. Just because there's not too much that I can see you doing with Carl. You can't win you can't really win a game with Carl. It's more like you have to be carried while solidly winning a lane or something like that. Let's see if we can take out Real Canadian. I don't think we're going to be able to. We're just going to walk through the side over here. I don't think there's anything you can do. As I've said with Carl, there's no comeback effect. There's nothing that really can be done when you're down with Carl. We can see if we can go in like that, but the bull's just going to take us out. It would have taken us out anyways. So overall rating, I'm going to give him a C. Closer to a D, so probably a C- minus or a D+. Plus. Just because he's not really useful, he can't really win too many lanes, and he's definitely not the best mid, there are a lot better ones that can be played. Now let's move on to Bounty and see how he does there. So this is going to be our Bounty game. Now as I said, there's going to be uh, two recordings of what I didn't get live, and it's going to be Bounty and Siege, which are going to be the final two games. So let's talk about Bounty. So some one of the benefits that he really has in Bounty is that you can see he's a ranged brawler. He's more on the medium to long range. He's kind of in between that spectrum. I'd say a medium range is someone like Nita who has about six, seven tiles to shoot, where Carl has eight. So as you can see, I'm able to stay safely in my grass where I'm not gonna be hit too hard. And I'm able to firmly and be able to hit the other team. Now what I'm basically doing at this point is what you want to be doing in Bounty, which is chipping until you get your super. Now why you ask, at, at high level bounty, what you want to do is just chip until you get your super because every death is so vital and crucial. Now we're going to be able to take out that penny over there as well as Toma, our dynamite was able to get one kill so we're going to be up 4-1 to one as I got the first star. Now this is something I don't suggest doing, I basically went in and I just suicided. Now don't ask me why, I kind of wanted to show off a little bit of Carl's super and it basically did nothing. Now the Leon went invisible to avoid. I wouldn't have avoid being killed. I wouldn't have done that, but whatever. We actually did get our super back, which is pretty phenomenal. So we're just gonna be chilling over here with our dynamite, trying to pinch this Brock. 47 seconds left in the game. Again, perfect distance to just walk up, get a get a chip shot at the grass, and then walk back safely so we don't get killed. You have 6.1k health, which is actually pretty phenomenal for his range. So this is pretty amazing, and you're gonna stay safe as long as you're not going too aggressive. Now we were able to get a kill over there against the opponent's Brock, and we are up 3 with 30 seconds left. Now as you guys know, Carl is really good when brawlers are bunched up together, and a very good representation of this is going to be shown. Now we were hit by the Petty turret, so we did move back with 15 seconds left. OG moved up, went with his invisibility, we took a shot, they're bunched together, and then we went and spinned right onto them. Now this is going to give us a double kill, we went right beside the Brock, and this is kind of just a flex, totally unnecessary, but we were able to kill the Brock, and we have 6 stars, by far the most, and more than their whole team got combined with Carl, and that gave us the star player. Now my grading for Carl, I would give him, on bounty at least, I would give him a B or a B-. minus. Now why? I think he's very strong in this mode, this is definitely tied for probably his strongest mode along with Brawl Ball and Siege, those three, those three modes are very specific. But we haven't gone on to Siege, let's not talk too much about it, and let's actually hop into the Siege game as our final game for the day. So here we go, this is going to be our game on Siege. We're going to be facing a pretty typical comp, so a thrower, a medium brawler such as Anita, a Leon, or a Spike, in this instance Spike, and a tank, either Primo, Bull, or Frank, this time it's going to be a Bull. 
So what's good about uh, what's good about Carl? Same as in Bounty, the ranges for him is perfect on this map at least. So we were able to kill the bull, we were able to chip the barley really well. As you guys can see, we're keeping the spike back completely. He's not even able to move up. We're going to help Tom out and get that kill on the bull over there. We're just going to be pushing back uh, different brawlers. Let's see if we can hit that spike. We weren't able to, but we are able to put some pressure on that AFK barley and have him move back. Now, why is he so good and how do you use the super? He's good in here, again, because of his range. You're going to keep your range it's, and you're going to be able to apply a lot of pressure. P teams do usually bundle up in this mode, which is, again, super good for Carl as you want teams to be together on this map. Now, we were able to take out the Barley. Now, how do you use his super on this map? Now, his super actually isn't very good in Siege. Usually what it is is kind of an assassin type thing. And there isn't many times that you want to assassinate too much in the siege and give up position. A time when I use it usually is to take out their one of their weaker brawlers when attacking the Ike like we just did with that Barley. So we can have a really strong first attack or second attack. Now we were able to do 71%. We're going to go down to the bull over there because bull does counter uh, Carl. But we were able to do a lot of percentile damage. Now we're down 2-1 at this moment. OG is going to sneak over there as they cash in their third to be able to take in take out their spike. He is going to go down to their barley, but we're going to be able to apply pressure and take out the barley and to and get a uh, power up, as well as we're going to be able to get this kill on the bull with the help of Toma, well, mostly Toma, and we're going to be able to cash in that siege as well. As you guys can see, we're doing a lot of pressure and we're barely getting hit, which is exactly what you guys want to do. OG is going to sneak in with a Leon, which again, I would suggest that you guys do a lot. You guys want to use your sneak. You don't want to be too dependent on the robot. We know we're going to win this game. There's a second push coming, and all we have to do is 11%. The other team is basically going to, gonna, going to give up, so we're just going to do a little bit of a flex and kill the spike over there. But we're just going to walk up to the Ike. We're going to chip it a couple times, and that is going to be it for this game. Overall rating, I give him a B or B minus relative to uh, Bounty, just because his strengths are basically the same here. You keep your range, you apply pressure, but you also stay back and try not to get hit and hold position. Now, let's just go back into the main screen and take our final notes on Carl. Now, my final impression on Carl, I think he's a completely average brawler, or even a little bit below average. Relative to Gene, he came into the map, I mean, he came into the game, and he's good in a few maps, he's strong in a few maps, he has his spots and he has his moments, but he's really not a brawler that fits perfectly in the meta. You're going to put him in a competitive uh, setting. Anita and a Spike will be able to completely take him out. Speaking of competitive setting, YDE sends us an invite. Spike is going to be completely able to take him out normally with the help of a strong Pam. But he is pretty good against Spike if you just put him one-on-one. -on -one. Now what I would do with Gene, I think he's a little bit underwhelming. So what I would do is raise the speed of his shots. Now why would I do that? A, because I think without a max, without a max out star power with, with Carl, I think he's useless. I think his shot is way too slow and it's just unfair. Now what this is going to do by raising his shot speed, A, you can do what we spoke about at the start of the video and take a shot and then move behind a wall or move a direction and force the, uh, the, the, force the axe to come back at that direction at you. Sorry for the little bit of the stutter there, I had a mind fart, it's really early on in the morning. And it's going to allow you to A, do higher DPS and B, be able to do those cool advanced shots way easier. And what I, what that would do is just kind of make this brawler decent against someone like Nita, someone like Jesse, who's really good, who gets their shots fast and can just bum rush you right in the face. Now, again, this is just my thoughts. I don't know exactly what you guys think of him so far. The general reaction has been he's pretty bad, but this is my honest opinion. If I were to rate him out of 24 brawlers, I put him somewhere in the 16 to 18 range. Now, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this guide. If you do, please let me know in the comments because I'm very open to doing these guides even more. Usually what I do is I just play a brawler on a map. I talk about him. I give you his strengths and his weaknesses, give you some live gameplay. But this was definitely a lot more work, but I think it's definitely rewarding, not only for myself to kind of see exactly what Carl is like, to see his exact strengths and weaknesses, but for you guys to completely get a general understanding and to learn things that I picked up as a quote-unquote pro player and that not many people know. Anyways, let me know if you guys liked the video by liking it, obviously. Comment, let me know if you enjoyed it, and obviously subscribe if you're new to the channel. But with that being said, thank you for watching the video. We'll be back tomorrow. Peace.